Not all table saws can use one, so make sure yours can. Even table saws that can use them have limitations such as size, width. Your arbor dictates a significant amount of what you can use on it, specifically the width. And what else? Unplug. Safety. Protect yourself. Unplug your table saw before messing anywhere inside where the arbor is. You get two blades. These blades are the outside blades, they're red, and they have opposite rotational patterns. And it's important to put them on with the correct rotation, as well as the label that says this side out. The other side is just solid red. So if you see this on the outside, you've got them backwards. Uh, their teeth are set in on one side, so they are very specific on their orientation. Okay. Behind the outside blades, you get a packet of shims. There are eight shims here. Okay, you get 0 .020, 0 .012, 0 .008, 0 .004, and you get five of those. And those eight, this makes up almost exactly a sixteenth of an inch, okay? And that comes into play because we have um, spacers in here that are a sixteenth of an inch. And when you're trying to find the correct size and width, you're gonna need to do some mixing and matching if you can't get it quite right. Now there are, on this sheet right here, a guideline as to how to assemble this to get some widths. And you just might find that maybe you need it a little bit bigger or smaller. And so that's where the shims and spacers come into play. On the back side, we have three chippers stored. These chippers have a tooth on each end and a blunt side on each end. And when you install it, you need to make sure that the tooth is coming at you. Uh, the blunt side will come first and then the tooth. And you have three of those there, an eighth of an inch wide. And that eighth of an inch, you know, helps make that dado that much wider. And here are the spacers. They are a sixteenth of an inch, as I said, and you can get three of them. So with all of these combined, we can make up to seven eighths inch wide dados. And let's go over some of the rules of assembly. And we're gonna do that with my makeshift arbor. Because it's hard to show this inside an actual table saw, I'm gonna go ahead and do it right here. And so the first thing I need to do because my arbor is facing to the right is put on the left outside blade. Not labeled anywhere on here as it might indicate in the instructions. But we can figure that out with the rotation. So I have the tooth coming towards me, rotating this way. And I look and there's no writing on this side, but there is writing on this side. So I could put that on first and boom, we have our first outside blade on. Now I'm very sorry if the camera goes out of focus. It is a problem every once in a while. Now you could put on the two outside blades and that is the smallest dado that you can make with this set. You can never just use one outside blade. You always have to use a minimum of two and anything else you put in must go between them. That's why they're called outside blades, not wherever you want blades. Stagger the blades so that way their teeth are not touching, um, that there's enough clearance between them to be able to chip out wood evenly, and tighten down your arbor with the appropriate um, equipment and hardware. Okay. Okay, that's always a fun saying. We wanna make this a little wider. We can look at our cheat sheet right here and say we want to do three eighths. Well, that requires one chipper. And when you put the chipper on, you got a few rules. One is that the chipper must always land between two of the teeth. Uh, and when I say the chipper, um, I mean the blunt part as well as the tooth need to land between two teeth on the outside blade. And a quick close up there will help illustrate it. And so you see, 
We got our outside blade teeth and this is open between it. If you get an outside blade or outside blade tooth in between there, you've gone wrong, okay? Now, oh, there we go, gets a little wonky. So what else do we need to look at? We need to look at adding a second chipper. Now, I, I say that because I got distracted, sorry. In order to do 3 8 we have to add another outside blade. And because the width between them on the spacer is not that much, the outside blades can touch. And so they need to be uh, put in staggered a bit. So that way they don't touch because they are inset or offset a little bit on the inside to help clear away some of that meat that you're cutting out. I believe they're offset um, a 32nd of an inch, which is half of a 16th because a spacer between there will help line it up. Anyways, that's just my idea. But if you want to put two spacers on, which you do a lot, the second spacer needs to rotate 90 degrees, which is a right angle. And if you can't remember what angle that is, it's a T, basically. Boom. You'll get a right angle on either side of these uh, perpendicular lines. Not parallel lines, perpendicular. I get all these comments sometimes in the description about being wrong about right angles and stuff like parallel and perpendicular. So I say that because there's so many trolls out there. If you want to put on a third one, well that third one rotates. 90 degrees from the last one you turned on. And I do have to say that this orientation, you get the those two blades pretty close together. And so I guess you might need to stagger those just a little bit. You gotta use common sense. I'm not the authority on it, but I do believe I am right. But feel free to verify me because it is your life, correct? Okay, now if you want to use some spacers, the spacers go between like so in any configuration you want, so long as there aren't two spacers right next to each other. So I just put one on there to put another one on. You've now created too much width between this cutter and the last cutter that you'll probably have a little slice that doesn't get removed from where you're cutting a groove. So you only have three and between the three cutters and the two outsides, there are four possible locations for the spacers. So my suggestion, eh, it could go either way, is if you're going for a big one, put one spacer on at the beginning you can put one on after that as well. And depending upon if you're gonna be using shims, if you're gonna use shims, put this one on here now. If you're not using shims, put it on there. But if you are using shims, now you put your shims on right here. And this is the best orientation for the max. So now say you're doing three fourths. And so let's put that, put it into the three fourths arrangement. Three fourths is both outside blades, three chippers and two spacers. Okay, so I need to remove one spacer. So here's one spacer I'm pulling out, okay. And I put on all my blades and push comes to shove and this is, let's say, too small. And we need it to go bigger. If you know how much bigger you need, you could just add one of these shims by taking this first outside blade off, putting whatever arrangement of shims to make, make up that missing uh, width, and you could put it on like that. But per se, your blade's too wide. Well, well, we would need to remove one of those spacers, 
And I guess the best spacer to remove would actually be the first one we put on now. Because I like one spacer between my chippers, so that way my first and last chipper do not touch when they're in the same orientation. Okay, so first chipper up against the outside blade. Then I'll put on a spacer, a chipper, a, another chipper, and then I'm gonna put on this whole pack of shims minus whatever I need to remove from a 16th, because these are about equal. So maybe it's just 0 .004, so I'll just take one of those tiny little 0 .004s, remove it, and put the seven other shims on, along with my outside blade. And boom, I think we've covered pretty much everything. If you noticed anything that I messed up on, let me know in the comments. And there we have it, a nice dado groove in this board. We could use that for all sorts of different things, uh, shelves or uh, cubbies and boxes. The last thing I have to say about this is a one small criticism, and that is on the packaging, it says lifetime guarantee, see details inside. However, upon reading all the literature inside here, and specifically the warranty section, I find no mention of a lifetime guarantee, but instead just the mention of a 60 day manufacturer guarantee against defects, which is all well and good, but most of that is implied. And I just find it a little deceptive that they would put a lifetime guarantee notice on it as an added sales pitch. I mean, they put stars next to it, for goodness sake. Anyways, if I do have a problem with this blade, I will let you know what the resolution is with the manufacturer, and I'm going to do so incognito. I'm not going to tell them, hey, I'm a YouTuber, you know, you got to take care of me, you know. I want to see what they would do to the average Joe or Jill. Watching out for you ladies. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you did, click like, subscribe, and share. If you, if you want, you know. I, I always appreciate subscribers, you know. Subscribers help me with all of this. And it's a lot of fun learning and sharing this stuff. And if I haven't sold you on the sales pitch yet, I should probably, probably get better at that. <laughs> Be safe, my friends.